are the Board of Supervisors of the County of Del Norte and the governing body of all other special assessments and taxing districts for which said board so acts is now meeting in regular session. Only those items that indicate a specific time will be heard at that assigned time. All other items may be taken out of sequence to accommodate the staff and public availability. Uh, Supervisor Finnegan, could you lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Uh, do we have any introduction of any new employees? Okay, seeing no introduction of new employees. Uh, do we have any reportable actions from closed session? Not today. Okay. Um, at this point, I'll request any deletions, corrections, or additions from board members to the agenda at this time. <clears throat> In order to add an item to the agenda, the matter must have come to the attention of the county subsequent to the posting of the agenda, and the matter requires action for the next regular meeting of the Board of Supervisors. And I'm going to add one item that came up as a request from uh, local community members to a letter of support uh, to um, to basically sponsor 300 fourth graders in the county through building healthy communities for swim lessons so I'm going to put um, I will put it on as as uh, I would move to put it on do you have a second that's okay okay uh, all those in favor this Aye. is this is just to add it to the agenda any opposed Okay, I'm going to take that as unanimous. Moving on, so we'll discuss that after after consent agenda. So, did you need that to be called an emergency item that rose subsequent to posting the agenda and requires action before our next meeting? Just yes. for the record. Yeah, just for the record. That Thank you. Motion. Thanks yeah. for uh, pointing that out. Okay, at this point, uh, we are now, uh, now going to hear brief reports and announcements for board members related to programs, projects, travels, and committees. Uh, Supervisor Gitlin, would you like to start? Yes, thank you, Chair Sullivan. Uh, as you can see, I'm wearing my Lions Club international vest as a proud member of this outstanding service organization. I am very grateful to the work that the Lions Club does here in our community, here in Del Norte County, in helping people with their eyesight challenges and their hearing challenges. I owe my eyesight to the work of uh, the Lions Club International about four decades ago. I was a recipient of two corneal transplants a year apart uh, through the eye donor program at Lions Club International. Um, that's what you do. You donate your eyes. And that's what I, I did in 1971 and 1972. So I'm, I'm sorry to say we don't have an opportunity to hear you today, but I know during open a session, I see Jim and Sheila Coop here. I hope you'll tell us a little bit about the fine work you folks do and how proud I am to be part of your organization. Um, my activities uh, were a bit less than hectic uh, this week. I took a week vacation down south to attend my niece's wedding down in Lake Arrowhead. Uh, last week, uh, prior to the Jewish New Year, uh, Wednesday sunset, I attended our bi-monthly agency on aging uh, committee meeting, advisory council meeting in Eureka. Uh, that was Wednesday morning, September 4th. The commission took uh, action on two items. The commission unanimously voiced its opposition to Sutter Coates' move toward regionalization and the option of devolving Sutter Coast Hospital from its current acute care status to one which we all have known to be as critical access. The advisory board also passed a resolution of support urging Del Norte County's local transportation commission to immediately urge Caltrans to evaluate the 2003 study uh, changing the course of how we'll deal with last chance grade and build the three mile detour around this precarious part of US Highway 101, excuse me. Uh, both items, Sutter Coast Hospital and last chance grade, uh, are considered to be highly significant impact on the elderly uh, senior population. Um, over the weekend, I met with homeowners along the south side of Shelter Island. I see some of those folks in audience now who made me aware of a precarious situation, concerns they have about some very tall trees that actually sit at the senior estates uh, property and are hovering 
very dangerously, they're way up in the air, I'm going to guess 40 to 60 feet, maybe more, big branches coming out there. And uh, so we've brought this to the attention of our CDD department, and um, hopefully we can have those, trim, those trees trimmed in a way that they don't fall on someone's uh, property, causing physical damage or causing injury. There are propane tanks, there's oil tanks around property owners there. So we're on this, and I appreciate those folks from Shelter Island coming here to tell us about that specifically. Um, while on the subject of CDD, I have asked the department to do a cost analysis of the labor to affix the donated wire fencing uh, that was found by the transfer station as trash. Uh, the same fencing, about 25 feet of it, was located, and I'm very grateful to the vigilant eyes of <clears> the <throat> Hambro WSG in uh, finding this uh, metal fencing. I'd respectfully ask the board to accept this donation, which is now currently sitting in the warehouse at Building and Maintenance, and determine the man hours needed for building and maintaining, uh, building and maintenance to enclose the fencing, preventing further blighting on the 3.5 acre county owned parcel uh, juxtaposed to Walmart. Um, Thursday, I did celebrate Rosh Hashanah. It's the Jewish New Year, 5774. Celebration and recognition of the holiday continues for the next seven days or so and commences with uh, the Day of Atonement, which is uh, called Yom Kippur. Uh, during the process uh, Thursday, um, uh, Jewish members of our community using bread as their sins through their sins into the body of water, which is off the B Street Pier, and start the new year again. Um, many of you remember I made a promise uh, some meetings ago about my invitation for a very special guest for the Sea Cruise Car Show, which is October 11th and 12th. Well, I'm pleased to tell you I have delivered. And yesterday, I announced at the Sea Cruise Car Show meeting at the Chamber of Commerce that NHRA funny car legend Cruz Pedregon will come to our event. Cruz is one of the best in drag racing. Uh, he operates a 8,000 horsepower funny car, it's called, sponsored by the Snap-on Tools people. Covers a 1,000 mile drag strip in about four seconds at speeds of in excess of 315 miles per hour. Um, I want to thank uh, Robert Losacco, who's also here in the audience, for helping us arrange uh, a tour of Pelican Bay, which Mr. Pedregon is most interested in seeing. So thank you, Robert, on behalf of Pelican Bay. And uh, we'll be here to introduce uh, Mr. Pedregon and some of his staff at Car Show next month. Thank you very much. Supervisor Hemmingson. Yes, thank you. Um, I uh, had a call uh, from a congressional staff member who wanted to make sure that I was aware that uh, department, the California Department of Fish and Wildlife was having a meeting on the wolf plan for California. Um, evidently this is the third stakeholders meeting that they've had uh, at uh, University of California Davis. Um, I was a little concerned about it because Del Norte County is listed in part of the plan and yet I am not aware that we've been notified. Um, so I, I was a little concerned about that. Uh, so I called uh, Karen Kovacs who, is, um, who has been uh, facilitating these meetings uh, just so that I would get the, uh, uh, the proper uh, uh, outlook on what was going on um, and she I was concerned about the, uh, the introduction of the wolf into uh, Delmar County, um, and she assured me that there was going to be no introduction uh, into California um, in any form. Um, and this was a group of state stakeholders that uh, if they're, they're saying when the gray wolf comes back to California, that there's a plan in place uh, for some sort of management uh, of this. Uh, it's it's a little concerning because um, in Del Norte County, um, they state that there's uh, not sufficient habitat for the gray wolf, um, which in the back of my mind, I'm thinking of the snowy plover um, that we had to, uh, 
even though the snowy plover does not breed here, we had to set aside habitat for the snowy plover just in case they decided to vacation here for If long. I remember, it was a place that they would like yeah. if they were in the neighborhood. So it concerns me a little bit that we may have to be dealing with some habitat on the gray wolf. Um, uh, uh, so anyway, I, uh, I got the information. There is information on their website. website uh, uh, you know, Karen says it's been a completely transparent uh, issue even though we were not notified and I don't look at their website every day I don't know if any of you do but um, it's it's very disturbing that they say oh it's you know it's uh, it's on our website well you know you really don't know to look on their website for anything new until something new comes up so uh, anyway I'm keeping an eye on that uh, see what's going on there uh, had a meeting with uh, some fair board staff uh, discussing the future of Delmart uh, County Fair. Um, it was just a, a kind of a lunch meeting, so we're just uh, brainstorming some ideas, throwing out there, um, uh, seeing what we can do to, to keep our fair uh, uh, moving on. Uh, as you know, funding has been cut off by the state, so we're looking for alternatives, and that discussion will continue on for a while, I'm thinking. Uh, filled in for Supervisor Sullivan at the North Deal meeting. Um, I don't know what the acronym stands for. It's Director's External Advisory Liaison Group. There you go. Now, if you get, if you can figure out anything on what that means, yeah. what it has to do with are the activities that Caltrans performing within our area, or within their district, actually District One. Um, so I went down to the meeting. Uh, it's always uh, really enjoyable for me because I like to know what's going on, um, what Caltrans is up to. Um, uh, Char Charlie Fielder, uh, uh, he facilitates this, uh, representatives uh, uh, from uh, um, legislator, uh, California legislators is there, uh, California Highway Patrol, um, and it's a very interesting meeting. Uh, uh, Charlie started off with saying he was down there at the Bay Bridge opening I uh, got to see that. It opened actually a day earlier, or 12 hours earlier, or so maybe 18 hours earlier than what it was supposed to. He says that was a pretty neat deal. And actually, if we just had the money that it cost for them to put the <laughs> lights on, uh, we, we, could do, we could do a lot here. But anyway, it, it's, it's a pretty neat deal, and they were pretty excited about that. And uh, now they'll start removing the old Bay Bridge, uh, which I think is only going to take about a year. I was really surprised. Um, we had some discussions. Uh, we talked about Richardson's Grove. Uh, the supplemental environmental documents due out in about a week, um, where there's no adverse impacts to old growth redwood. There'll be a 30-day comment period. Um, and uh, they'd like to start that project in May, uh, March of 2014. So. Uh, looking forward to that. That will uh, that will help with the SDAA access to Delmar County from the south. Uh, in uh, Delmar County, uh, the Gateway Project on the north end of Crescent City, um, using uh, what's called a Hawk system, which is a high-intensity light system. It's almost like a stoplight, except that the stoplights are turned horizontally rather than vertically, um, and uh, they're a flashing red light instead of a solid red light so you evidently stop at the crosswalk and then you move on when it's clear um, so that's going to be kind of interesting uh, i was supposed to get some literature on that I haven't received that yet because um, uh, i'd really like to see um, see the whole thing but it sounds pretty neat um, we've had uh, we've had some of those lighted crosswalks that uh, go in the pavement and have had little or no success here because of the rains that we get. So I'm glad to see that this is all above ground lighting um, and hopefully that'll work work well. Uh, the 199-197 project um, is, uh, is slated to start next year. Um, they'll actually plan on start, uh, start some clearing process uh, in advance of construction probably in January 2014. Uh, so that's good to hear. Um, uh, the 197 route, uh, Ruby 1 and Ruby 2 projects will start uh, in mid-summer of 2014, uh, and the Washington Curve is probably going to start in the fall of uh, 2014. Um, 
the, they're also replacing the Middle Fork Bridge, uh, which is going to be an arch bridge. I haven't seen uh, the design of it yet, but uh, they said it's supposedly it's supposed to look pretty neat. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. The Klamath River Bridge Hinge Project, um, they're supposed to have two, I think, two of the hinges done. There's three total hinges. There should have two of those done by October 15th, and uh, next year they're going to finish up on the third one. Um, we talked about last chance grade. Uh, Scott, Scott McHenry um, from the Federal Highways um, was up to look at the Klamath Bridge, so he was also going to make it a point to look at uh, um, last chance grade. So um, we'll be waiting to hear what his uh, report is back on that. Uh, he also brought the field rep, uh, Miguel Ramos, um, and uh, be interesting to see what they think about last chance grade because. Uh, they will probably be partners in the funding uh, of that particular process. Uh, so um, I look forward to, to getting uh, last chance grade uh, um, work done. Um, had uh, some meetings with staff on some permitting issues and uh, zoning violations. Uh, um, hopefully get those uh, ironed out and, and fixed. Uh, yesterday had a local mental health board uh, meeting uh, where we're looking at uh, uh, renting a little more uh, space to accommodate uh, employees and clients um, and there will be a, a certainly a presentation coming before future facilities soon and then to the board um, and uh, a little presentation on uh, cultural competence trainings and that was about it for me all right thank you supervisor McClure yes thank you I uh for the last two weeks, my primary focus has been on moving my classroom and getting ready for the new school year. And I can say it's off to a good start, and there's lots of, uh, lots of good energy around education. And um, so that's been my primary focus. I did um, assist on putting on a free Labor Day picnic down at uh, Front Street Park, where we had about 100 in attendance. and. Um, I was able to spend a little bit of time with uh, Dr. Jim Wood, who's running for assembly out of Healdsburg, and talked with him quite extensively about transportation being a key issue for us in relationship to what we need to be able to get to reach the rest of the world. I also met um, with Chris Lehman, who has put his hat in for state senate, and he and I had a very similar conversation about the importance of transportation and the importance of attempting to figure out some kind of economic engine that uh, drives us, which then we led us to the conversation about the hospital as being one of the economic drivers of our community. Um, the Senior Center, we had a meeting. We are still attempting to settle out with, um, with the California Department, C CSD, I think it's called, of the, the, the support programs for senior programs, but we are able to um, continue to deliver meals. I think we did about, I, I better not tell the number because I don't have it in front of me, but we have had a very successful program. We are serving more meals at home now than we are serving at the senior center. And that, we think, is in, in relationship to some of the transportation services that have gone away for seniors, but we were able to pick it up on the other end for, for the home delivered meal program. I talked with uh, Chesbro's uh, Chief of Staff, Lisa Raymer, about the fair and uh, was a bit disappointed because they were unable to get a, um, any language because of, it wasn't listed as an urgency item for the fair, but possibly that there can be language next year that can assist with the structure of the fair board in order for them to be more um, self-sufficient and be able to figure out ways to um, continue to stay alive. I um, have been watching closely in the next three days, we are going to see movement at the state capitol that is, it, it's an amazing process. It makes you wanna almost just sit there and watch it happen as they got in amend bills and, and get things going and passing. And so I've been watching several of those um, and 
cannot at this point predict what's going to come out of there because it's a um, it's an exploding uh, time at the Capitol. I also um, on my way today to the Coastal Commission meeting in, that will be held in Eureka for the next two days and um, significant issues on that agenda as the Border Coast Thor Authorities, Airport Authorities, um, CBP, and also the 101 corridor between Eureka and Arcata of what types of improvements are being suggested there. And um, so th that's a, those are the primary issues. There's a couple of smaller issues out of Mendocino, but those are the primary issues in relationship to Del Norte and Humboldt counties. And that's about it. All right, thank you. Supervisor Finnegan. Thank you. I'll try to be brief and not repeat a lot of the same meetings that we went to and some of the concerns, especially regarding transportation in the 101 through the Klamath area. Um, just acknowledging that we're all working on it together. I uh, also had those same discussions with the fair board uh, regarding that issue and talked with people in Sacramento regarding it, including a strategy and uh, passed out some information I received from CSAC, how to work with LAFCO and structured around elections. So. Uh, special districts come to mind. I was invited to speak um, against, uh, or to, rather to testify, uh, was one of the reasons I was in our special meeting. Uh, in front of the Senate, to talk about gut and amend bills, there was a Senator Hill, who was a former supervisor, did a gut and amend to try to restrict the voice of public agencies, uh, such as CSAC, RCRC, uh, League of Cities. In that, if you received any public money at all, then all your monies from that were supposed to be deemed as public money. So in other words, if we paid dues to an organization to lobby on our behalf because it was cheaper and they were more effective than sending me or somebody else down there, and some of those monies that that organization sustained itself with were done through uh, bonding um, residuals or done through housing programs or done through being a landlord, all of that was to be deemed commingled, and it was all to be deemed as public agencies, um, public monies, in an attempt to shut up people like um, Stifle, CSAC, or CRC. Anyway, we were successful. Um, we had that bill changed um, so we can continue to lobby on behalf of counties. As well as we basically did is say, uh, public monies are public monies. We already report that way. We don't, you know, we have different bank accounts and different reporting requirements already. Please don't change it. Also, I had an opportunity to go to Shasta um, with Matt Kate, the executive director of CSAC, and meet with the executive director and the sheriffs at the Sheriff's Association over in Shasta. Uh, great meeting. Um, had an op op opportunity to speak with and meet with and spend some time with uh, their executive officer, uh, Nick Warner, as well as the, uh, their president of their association and just see what they're up to and get on the same page regarding a lot of issues, mainly the AB 109 issues and what has been proposed as an early release by the courts of the 10,000 or 9,900 prisoners. I was then invited by the governor to come down and stand alongside of him have, for a speaking part at a press conference where we stood behind his proposal, uh, his legislation for that guaranteed that there would be no early releases of any of those 9,000 prisoners that were already deemed to be violent or predatory, uh, that didn't meet the non-non-nons that we were already taking care of in AB 109 as a short-term fix uh, and then work on a long-term fix. Came back here, had a meeting with the First Five Association. We talked about strategies for really ramping up uh, the Family Resource Center and some new additional partners and we'll continue to have those discussions. Met with the tri-agency to decide to where to go with that and what to do with economic development in this community. Went back to Sacramento and had a meeting of the Board of Directors for the State Association, CSAC. Met with Senator, the only people that were not at that previous uh, press conference was Senator Steinberg, uh, both the leaders of the House, uh, including the Speaker, and the Senate Majority or Senate Minority Leader uh, were all on board. The only one that wasn't was Senator Steinberg because he was running his own bill. And his own bill had to do with getting a delay for the release. Uh, which is something the courts had not indicated they would agree to, but also to throw out some bribe money. By that I mean money going directly to counties to work on programs that might help reduce recidivism. So we heard from, while it was uh, a, a holiday that he could not attend, the Jewish holiday, uh, he could not meet with us. Um, three of his staff members did meet with us and we heard from him and the main thing was, well why are you offering to give counties billions of more dollars 
when you refuse to fund the AB 109 or the 678 portion of that, you already have the vehicle, it's already shown to be working, why don't you put your funds there instead of reworking this and then work with the governor on the short term as well as the long term? Because there was nothing in the senator's bill that would preclude them from releasing these 9,000 or even 10 of these felons back onto the streets. We then had an unprecedented meeting with the governor. The governor came over and met with CSAC in closed session for an hour and 45 minutes. And we talked, Mike might want to talk about this later. Uh, he did not want to leave. He wanted to hear what supervisors had to say on everything regarding what was working as far as public safety and any other items in our community. The, the access and the support that this governor has shown counties is really unprecedented. At the end of that, we went back into open session and voted unanimously to support the governor's proposal along with the the obligation that he work with counties to work on a, on a long-term fix since we were supporting the short-term fix. Uh, and I can report out to you that on Monday, the fix that we proposed, that was suggested to Senator Steinberg and to the governor, uh, became reality. And that long-term fix happened uh, yesterday afternoon in that the monies, will more money will be going into AB uh, the 209, the 678, Anyway, the community correction plans on the short term. The short term fix will be that no prisoners will be released. And the long term, excuse me, fix is that we will work on additional programs and any monies that are realized by extending the and implementing more money into this recidivism uh, program would be again returned back into uh, those uh, community correction plans. So it made your success and, and um, we were at the table and made it happen. So it was our voice that was heard. After that, came back and had a meeting with uh, the JPA staff at the, um, at the airport regarding the, some of the issues that uh, coastal staff has with the airport out there. You know, there's gonna be, well, we had frog tunnels for the, for the airport terminal, and now I guess they're gonna have turtle tunnels or something for the RSA because there's some turtles out there. Thank God they haven't found Jerry Hoffa's body and there hasn't been any unicorn sightings out there. You'd have to deal with that too. But uh, we will work through this. Um, also had calls from several constituents regarding some land use issues and some uh, abatement issues and whatnot that is constantly going on. And then uh, took a little bit of time uh, for myself. I went down and watched the 49er Packer game. Had a great time with my, one of my sons. And thank God there's only three more days of the legislature. Um, it will end on Thursday, and that's all the damage they'll be able to do for this year. So let's see what they can, how bad they can do it in the next two days. That's it. Yeah, we'll see how prolific they are. Yeah. Um, okay, well, uh, also uh, busy, busy couple weeks. Uh, attended the uh, Delnort Solid Waste Management Authority meeting, um, and also attended the same tri-agency meeting and in terms of what the future of that organization is, uh, attended a gender review. Uh, then I was down at the CSAC meeting that Supervisor Finnegan was as well. Um, it was, um, a, as he has already laid out exactly what Steinberg presented his plan, Governor Brown presented his plan. Um, it was impressive, I mean, I've got to say on the, the time that I've been on the, the board, which is about seven years, uh, I don't think we've had a governor interact that much with counties. Um, any previous governors we'd see from afar and they'd be doing a big and they're covered by security and uh, Governor Brown came in the meeting and what I thought he was going to be there 15 minutes it was an hour and 45 minutes in fact I had another thing I had to run to uh, shortly after he left but it uh, it was it was it was good that he actually interacted with counties because he does understand the the impact of uh, of what's happening to counties right now on the on this prisoner thing. And um, I think the key thing we took away from that in terms of the short-term fix is, is the judge, the three panel judge, the federal judges have said, you will get your population down to 137.5% of capacity uh, by December. There is no ifs, ands, and buts. That's their final decision. So the governor put his plan together to, um, to address that, but at the same time not release these these felons that we're not talking the non non nons. You're talking the the, uh, the you're talking the bad ones basically that will be coming out. So um, his plan put in place prevents any release of prisoners uh, in that capacity. So it's been a really good thing. I know that's a concern of a lot of constituents, um, and at this point it's not going to happen. So that that's a good thing. Um, 
after that, left and met with uh, uh, representatives from Cal EM EMA. Uh, and uh, Kirby Everhart uh, was a person I talked to, and Kirby was uh, extremely gracious setting up his team, uh, including Rick Castillo. And my specific question is where we're at. The uh, Big Rock Community Service District is getting their water tank replaced out in Hayuchi. And um, it's an old redwood tank. It's got some issues with the, the, the support system it's on right now. Uh, it's a perfect project to get funded. I know Supervisor Hemmingson was pretty instrumental in helping uh, the North Coast Partner Water Plan uh, get a partial funding, but we're waiting for the, uh, basically waiting for FEMA money. And um, we are number one on that list on two different pots of money that, uh, and it looks like one project may fall out of it. So that means Big Rock's project would, would jump up to the, uh, would, would get funded at that point. So it was a good meeting and I appreciate their time explaining exactly the process and where things are at. Um, so anyway, uh, I, I was encouraged after the meeting. Also, um, I had a, uh, Got an email from my executive director, Tamara Layton, of the Local Transportation Commission. It looks like last chance grade opening has been delayed to October 30th. So um, this becomes a worse and worse situation as we go along. Uh, the highway, from my consideration, has already failed. It's not a question. Uh, I mean, we do not have a two-lane traffic at all up there. So um, that, as we've talked about, the Local Transportation Commission, this is their, one of their top priorities uh, to deal with. And those familiar, not as familiar with what we call TECO or Local Transportation Commission is it's represents the city, the county, and, and a, a member at large also. And um, that organization is to unite the city and county and deal with transportation issues. So it's the perfect agency to push this issue and that's, um, I know that's at the forefront. Also had a couple of different conversations with Senator Nielsen's representative Scott Feller in regards to, um, they have, have drafted a couple letters and, and dealt with what we call California Fish and Wildlife, used to be called California Fish and Game, um, in regards to uh, PILT money, which is payment in lieu of taxes. So the situation is Fish and Game or Fish and Wildlife owns property in Delaware County. And because they're an agency, they are um, obligated to pay us payment in lieu of taxes to offset, um, you know, to provide services locally. Um, they haven't done it. They've budgeted, but they have not appropriated, which is incredible wordsmith, uh, wordsmith, wordsmithing of it. But what it basically essentially uh, comes back to is they haven't paid us. So the figure we were able to find out, we were figuring it, it was in the range of $200,000, which I'm sure we're going to deal with the budget today uh, as a start. Um, that is, is crucial, but we've been able to find out it's over half a million dollars that's owed to the county. So um, I know when Supervisor Hemmingson has dealt with fish and wild or fishing game, uh, whatever they want to call themselves, um, it's extremely frustrating to, to hear they're going this route and they're a property owner locally. You know all of you as property owners, if you got to the point where you weren't paying your property taxes, you know, you get foreclosed on. And so um, at this point, uh, it's half a million dollars would significantly help our budget. And I know it's a priority, um, and we've had a lot of conversations with Senator Nielsen staff on that. So um, on a lighter note, um, I did get a chance to go to the Crescent Elk Orientation, which had all of these, um, you know, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders at it. And it was a pretty neat event to see them all in that building. And um, it, uh, I actually taught at Crescent Elk one year, and I don't remember that many students being there the year I taught, but there's, there's a lot of kids there. So. Um, it's, it's cool to see that next generation. They're excited and, and a little nervous about starting up at Crescent Hill because it is bigger school. So um, anyway, a uh, real positive uh, uh, experience. Um, and other than that, we are going to, we're still short of public comment period, so we're gonna hear from our, a brief report from our county administrative officer, Jay. I'll make a brief. Uh, most of our time recently has been dealing with the recommended budget as well as employee negotiations. Uh, had uh, some conversations regarding some building and uh, improvement issues at the Vets Hall. I uh, met with the uh, new foreman of the grand jury to go over some of the specifics, including their budget. Uh, for everybody's information, the county does is obligated by law to pay for the uh, uh, training of new uh, four persons and, uh, and uh, jurists and also some of the 
incidental costs and, and printing costs. So uh, we do meet with them annually and then they also will be doing investigations on different departments and then any complaints that come in. Uh, we met with Red, Cro Red Cross. They are going through a reorganization with the retirement of a local coordinator and we've been working closely with them through the OES and Cindy will continue to do so, doing some staff evaluations, uh, preparing to bring the legislative platform to the board for the next meeting, coinciding with the final budget and working with our advocates and the fair board in regards to some of the issues that they brought forward previously and then dealing with some miscellaneous issues that are brought forward on a daily basis that sometimes we can't make these things up. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, so at this point I will entertain a motion to accept the consent agenda because we're still short of public comment period, but um, there is public comment on the consent agenda, so um, I'll entertain a motion. I move to approve. Okay, second. So moved and seconded. Any public comment on consent agenda items only? So that's listed one through 16 in the, in the, uh, in the agenda. Okay, seeing no public comment, I'll bring it back to the board. Any comments, questions? Supervisor Finnegan. Yeah, I do have comments on the, in general. Uh, part of the sign off when somebody puts something on the agenda for a department is to have a uh, children's impact statement as to how it affects children and families, economic development, health and safety, that type of issue. Um, supposed to be standard protocol. I'd like to commend uh, the six departments or the six items that had to do with everything from even engineering uh, complied. Uh, and CDD did a great job and mental health and social services. Um, nine did not. And the irony out of that is the majority of them had to do with child abuse prevention grants and yet they didn't bother to tie in what the significance was or how it impacted children. And I'm gonna ask in the future that these be kicked out and not be brought forward if they're not complete. Uh, just a statement. Okay. Any other questions, comments on consent agenda items? Okay, Tony, could you please pull the vote? Supervisor Gitlin? Yes. Supervisor Finnegan? Yes. Supervisor Hemmingson? Yes. Supervisor McClure? Yes. Chair Sullivan? Yes. Okay, so moving on to uh, our time, timed item, uh, which is public comment. And we are, let me grab my, no excuse, uh, which is item, which is item 18 in the agenda. Um, Members of the public may address the board on matters which are within the jurisdiction of the board. If you are addressing the board regarding a matter listed on the agenda, uh, you may be asked to hold your comments until the board takes up that matter. Uh, please limit your comments to three minutes or less and identify yourself into the microphone when you come up to speak. So at this point, I'll open to public comment. Anyone wishing to address the board? the trees that Mr. Gitlin was speaking of. I've lived in that trailer park shelter island for years and it's always a threat of limbs and, and the trees blowing over on my house, which my bedroom, on all of the, our bedrooms are on the south side, so we're all in jeopardy. I have a 260 gallon fuel tank with monitor for my monitor heater, which would cause a, a quite a spill if it was knocked over. And not to mention the cost and the labor in which it has taken to keep the pine needles off of the yard and off of the roof and out of the gutters. And that's about my comment. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Next speaker. Hello, my name is Gary Parkers. I'd also like to address the problem with the trees as well as safety hazards with his fuel tank and a propane tank right across the fence from my house. There's also a black mold problem. You know, my house is in the shade constantly. It never warms up, it never dries out. So I have to use kills to uh, kind of combat the mold problem inside my house. So 
if there's any avenue at all to help those people cut those trees or top them or whatever, I'd sure like to see some somebody able to help them out. Thank you. Next speaker. <clears throat> Linda Sutter, 5th District. Um, I'm kind of wondering why we don't have a public defender's office uh, instead of judges just um, appointing um, people, attorneys, because the there's unfair representation when a judge just appoints like a, a family attorney to do a criminal case because what I'm seeing is I don't see anybody doing suppressions of evidence. And, and when I worked over at the Public Defender's Office in Oregon, I learned about, that's the first thing we do to, is they take a police report and check to see what um, constitutional violations have been done on that police report to suppress evidence. And I don't see that happening in our county, which means that what an attorney is doing, like a judge will appoint a family law facilitator to a criminal case, and he doesn't even know what a suppression of evidence is, and so there's not fair representation, and they're telling people to take pleas. So I think that's a real injustice here and something that should be looked at. It would not cost the county money for a separate entity and a division for a public defender's office because what happens is you would, you would be, the people that are represented by uh, attorneys would end up having to pay for that representation on a smaller scale. So, and I don't know how the county pays appointed attorneys as it is, but that money could be utilized for a public defender's office that's separate because I don't see that happening here and I, I see, um, again, a lot of injustice. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Good morning. My name's Jim Coop, and I'm the president of the Crescent City Lions Club. And standing next to me is Connie Scott, uh, my fellow lion. And this morning, <laughs> we just wanted to take a moment to speak to our board of supervisors and those others that are in attendance a, a little bit about Lions Club International and the Crescent City Lions Club in particular. Um, the Lions Club International began in 1917, and we're the world's largest, trade, uh, largest service organization with over 1.4 million members, and we represent 44,000 clubs in over 200 countries. The Lions Club is involved in a variety of citizenship and educational, recreational, health, and public services. Our major service commitment is sight and hearing. The Lions Club are best known for working together to answer the needs and challenges of communities around the world to end prevention of blindness, to provide sight and hearing tests, and giving eyeglasses and hearing aids to the needy, and to do local service projects. The Crescent City Lions Club chartered in 2007. Since our charter, the Crescent City Lions Club has functioned as a rather small group in comparison to some of the other local service organizations in our community. But though we have been small in numbers, we've been, made a big impact on our community. In 2012, we helped over 100 persons in our community who were in need of eye exams and eyeglasses, hearing tests and hearing aids, sight and hearing surgeries, and diabetes testing. And we also have collected hundreds of pairs of used eyeglasses and sent them to centers where they are recycled. We support the youth in our community through scholarships and financial assistance for students to attend camps and other school activities. We continue to support several local nonprofit organizations such as the Coast Guard Auxiliary, whom we helped purchase life vest, and we help individuals who help others, such as Vicki Stamps, who makes the dolls for the kids suffering from cancer. Money's needed to support the many things we do come through different fundraising efforts in our community. We have Lions Club displays in many businesses selling Lions, Clubs mint, Lions Club mints, and Connie is the head of that for us. Um, we also have an annual rummage sale, a Christmas tree lot, and fireworks booth, where we work in partnership with Habitat for Humanity. And for everyone's information, those, those two um, fundraising events are held across the street from the fairgrounds next to Northwoods Realty. Persons in, uh, who are interested in joining the Lions Club may pick up applications at North Coast Mortgage or at the mailroom. 
And if you know of persons in our community who are in need of um, vision or um, hearing testing and uh, eyeglasses or hearing aids or something of that nature, um, please refer them to the Lions Club. We're there to help and serve our community. So it is our hope that we, we might um, soon experience an increase in membership so that we can, can continue to increase our support of our community. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Okay, since I'm not seeing anybody else on public comment, I'm gonna go ahead and close public comment period. Can I ask a question regarding yeah. public comment? We heard a couple speakers regarding trees. Are those, can we, uh, maybe through agenda review, you can follow up, see if they are on county owned property. If they're not, get them to the right people. Okay. The Supervisor Finnegan, um, so there's, there's clarification. These are two private parcels um, where the property is located, Senior Estates, Crescent Senior Estates, which backs up to the south end of Shelter Island. I have brought this to the attention of our CDD, uh, Heidi Kunstall. I think, Heidi, are you here? I see her? Yeah. And uh, I think you have some pictures that I sent you. Well, I get my point was, is that what I felt from them is that they said what they had to say and they too often there's no response because that's we don't want to get in a debate. But if they left thinking that it's a county responsibility and it's a private owner responsibility, I would hope that we would make sure that that private owner knew it was their responsibility rather than somebody thinking that we're going to take care of it when it's not ours to take care of. That's all. Okay. All right. Okay. So at this point, uh, I will, uh, let me go ahead and take the one budget transfer we have here. Uh, I'll entertain a motion for that and then we're going to go into the budget. So item 17 in the agenda. I move to approve uh, budget transfer 06-29 in the amount of $24,100. Second. Okay. It's been moved. Second, any public comment on item 17 in the agenda? Seeing no public comment, I'm going to bring it back to the board. Um, Tony, could you please pull the vote? Supervisor McClure? Yes. Supervisor Gitlin? Yes. Supervisor Finnegan? Yes. Supervisor Hemmingson? Yes. Chair Sullivan? Yes. Okay, we are now going to open the public hearing to uh, consider, which is item 19 in the agenda, open the public hearing to consider the recommended budget and all special districts budgets for the 2013-14 fiscal year and continue the hearing for 14 days and consider attachment A outlining staffing changes, including the elimination or creation of positions as requested by the county administrative officer. Jay. This is the first step in. Have I, I, I think I've already opened this up. Yeah. We'll, we'll come back to Anyway, go ahead. I'm okay. sorry. This is the first step in uh, presenting the recommended budget. Well, it's actually the second step in presenting the recommended budget. Um, the board has previously reviewed the recommended budget on June 30th, uh, adopted it as an interim spending plan. And um, at this point now you're, you're reviewing a uh, recommended budget that is balanced and addresses the primary needs of the uh, county as far as services, also the goals, objectives of the Board of Supervisors, and is a balancing act of providing uh, the services that are mandated, the services that are discretionary, and all within the uh, funding that's available. We've spent uh, time since April getting to this point. Uh, there are, uh, there's a slight increase in the overall general fund. We had some uh, additional revenue that did come in through PILT, uh, offsetting revenue through uh, realignment that we utilized. Some of the more significant issues that did arise come through public safety, um, including the district attorney's office where there's an increase in their budget as well as in the sheriff jail coroner budget, uh, primarily associated with either the loss of revenue through the projections from last year or through additional costs. Uh, some of that was offset through the use of AB 109 money, which is the realignment money for low level offenders was able to deal with some of the incarcerated individuals. We were able to do, uh, assist a few of the departments, uh, not in uh, a very significant way, but also uh, address some of the issues internally through restructuring, which are presented to you in attachment A. Um, 
unless the board would like me to read the 18 pages, um, no. I would uh, you're, you're good. ask for any questions or comments and direction. The board could choose to have additional meetings between now and the 24th. On the 24th, uh, we would present a budget to be adopted, uh, and ultimately we have until October 2nd if there are any issues at that time. Okay. Uh, board members' questions? No, I, it's a lot to discuss, but I think you're heading in the right direction. I think that um, it's a balanced budget, number one. It follows the goals and parameters and the policies that we outlined, and I'll reserve most of my comments for the 24th when we go to vote. So just a clarification, we are opening the public hearing just for, this is for the public's uh, edification, is we're not actually going to vote on the budget today, we're just opening it. So. Exactly, yeah, the uh, government code has certain parameters, and there's a 14-day public hearing process. Um, the board has the option of having hearings every day if you'd like, but uh, in general terms, uh, you open the public hearing to take comments, you have actually had, the public has had an ability since the 30th of June to comment on the uh, original or uh, recommended and so the, these are the final changes that are being recommended to the Board of Supervisors uh, if there are any questions or concerns at this point we could attempt to address those before the 24th if they're structural or there needs to be changes okay um, are we going to then do we need a motion to accept attachment a or is that not at this time okay. this is just for your consideration the 24th will be when we uh, recommend the budget to be adopted Okay, so I'm going to, at this point, open up to public comment. Any public comment on the proposed budget? Yes. Good morning. Good morning. I am Norma Williams, Vice President and Chairperson of the Bargaining Team for the Del Norte County Employees Association, SEIU Local 10 to 1. Though I cannot address what is currently being negotiated with the county, I would like to remind you of what should matter most to you, the employees of the County of Del Norte. From line staff to mid-management professionals, we are a dedicated, hard-working group. You want a road built or repaired? We'll build it and fix it. You have a blight problem? We'll go after the person and get it cleaned up. You have a child being neglected or abused? We'll place that child in protective care. Someone commits a crime? We'll arrest them and prosecute them. If you have a deadbeat parent who won't provide child support for your child, we'll see to it that they do. If you're unemployed or new to the area and have no financial resources and need assistance with food and medical care for your family, we'll provide the assistance to help keep you afloat and even the training to, keep you, to help you get employed. Paying taxes, registering a birth, a death, a marriage, even to vote, this and so many other services is what we provide the community. But we're also the community as well. Some of us actually receive the very assistance that we provide to others. We're invested here. Our families live here. Our children attend school. We shop here and pay our fair share of taxes. We're your neighbors, your fellow parishioners, and your constituents. But what you need to be mindful of is that there are employees who barely live paycheck to paycheck. Some who have to decide whether to go to the doctor to take care of that ache or pain or to put food on the table. Some who have to decide whether to buy that much needed medical prescription or pay the rent or a bill. Whether to get the car tuned up or an oil change or see if they can split the bills between paychecks and still have enough to buy food and gas and even clothes for working the kids. We agreed to take furloughs to save county jobs and balance the county's budget. But as the economy hit rock bottom, so did many of us. As a result, we bought less, saved little or nothing, and some lost what extra money they put away in separate retirement accounts. Prices are going up, but our wages stay stagnant. Highly trained professionals, mid-managers, and line staff are not earning competitive wages, even based on 2008 standards. Let me ask you something. After all your bills are paid, your rent or mortgage paid, groceries for two weeks put away, can you and your family live on less than $100? for two weeks? Less than 50? How about 20? Well, guess what? Some of your county employees do just that. So when you are reviewing and addressing all the needs of the departments, 
be mindful of the needs and wants of your employees and of the rightful compensation that is long overdue. As I said, we are a hard-working, dedicated, experienced group of individuals, community members, and citizens. We deserve to be recognized for it, respected for it, and compensated for it. You can't ask us to sacrifice any more or wait any longer. We simply can't afford it. Thank you. Thank you. Next, next speaker. Anyone else going to address the board in a public comment? Regarding the budget? Yes. Okay. Um, concerning the budget is, I think that you guys need to add something more to the budget. Susan, you're going to need to identify I'm yourself sorry. for the microphone, yeah. Okay. I think you guys folks need to need a little Susan, bit more. Susan, you need to say your name into the microphone. Susan so. White. Okay, thank you. I'm it's sorry. For, <laughs> it's for the record and also for the viewing audience that's okay. not here. All right. Thank you very much. Um, I wanted to come to you guys about your budget. I think you guys need to budget a little bit more for something else. It's very important that we do have a problem in Del Norte County, and that is for the employees to be drug tested. You have employees working for Del Norte County in the district attorney's office on the sheriff's department and all realms of the thing. I don't believe that you guys are actively drug testing your employees. We have a high problem in Del Norte County of drugs and everything. I'm not saying and I'm not making accusations, but I do believe that you need to start. I don't think the district attorney's office is nullified from having them being tested just as much as any other employee on the road crew or anywhere that works within the, the district. You folks are really good. You're good fathers and a mother to our county. And I would like you to be able to know that you possibly have a problem in your district attorney's office. And I would like to see that nullified that everybody is on a clean slate and everybody is drug free. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Any other speakers? Okay, seeing no other speakers, I am going to close public comment, bring it back to the board. Um, any final comments from board members? Supervisor McClure. Thank you. I, um, I appreciate the work that the team has done in trying to pull this budget together and recognize all of the, um, the hundreds of pages of changes that happen along the way. But I am deeply concerned with the um, problems that we're having with the sheriff and the jail budgets of the amount of money that is projected and then falls through and all I all I read is that well we were gonna have these contracts and then they fell through and so we're three hundred and forty six thousand dollars short and the, in the concluding statement on the on the budget where any that the sheriff's and jail budget has been um, understands that future reject, re, reductions in the projected revenue may re, result in midterm uh, adjustments. I'm wondering if we could get a report of the activity from the sheriff of what they're doing to regain these contracts, what they're doing to make sure that this revenue, instead of a mid-year adjustment, I would like to see a mid-year report that tells me how they've gained this revenue back because that revenue is affecting hundreds of lives in in relationship to being able to take some kind of increase in salary so for me I would really like to hear why Tehama County never made their contract why Shasta County went from nine uh, beds to two and a half beds and what in the what in the heck is up because this is really really costly and I mean I know that we all want safety yet at the same time we also want our employees to be able to have a living wage and so this kind of error in um, prediction of what the budget's going to be is devastating to um, the community so I would like to hear that from the sheriff's office that they actually come and explain this instead of just, well, we were just 400 and 
in excess of four hundred and twenty eight thousand dollars to the mistake or error or I'm not sure what it is so I would and I understand it's costly and I understand the realignment and I understand that we're in tight times but at the same time I think that our county family of workers um, should have some attention any other supervisors <laughs> supervisor Finnegan you know I know we're <coughs> as I said I was gonna say very much but and I won't other than I guess we're expected to have thick skin and so it is hard to sit here with when some of the buttons get pushed that some of the people who would admonish us have no idea how hard we number one when it came to taking pay cuts we were the first in line to take the pay cuts we were the last ones to get raises we were the first ones to argue for colas we we're the first ones and I'm not going to get into negotiating on TV or in public here but to not get the credit for being part of that county family making it all run so we all don't fall through the cracks and to acknowledge how hard that we do try and how hard this team has tried and will continue to try uh, there are no furloughs this year um, and uh, and yes we'd love to see everybody uh, get a raise or at least a schedule for raises acknowledging at the same time that there's going to be higher medical costs and higher pension costs so it's a it's a delicate balance and I know I should be have thicker skin being a former negotiator myself, but it's not called for. Uh, I think it's supposed to be teamwork, and I would appreciate seeing that spirit in the future. Supervisor Gitlin. Yes, thank you, Chair Sullivan. First of all, I want to address uh, uh, Ms. White. I think that's an excellent idea. Um, I'd like to ask uh, our CAO to investigate the cost for next year of what it would cost to drug test everyone every employee all 385 I believe is the number and just to see exactly where we stand and perhaps you could get back to us at that time so we can consider that because I think it's an excellent idea in relationship to our sheriff's department who uh, does yeoman's work uh, I think it's prudent to sit down with the sheriff uh, and find out what's going on I can appreciate the fact that there are unanticipated problems that come up in jail and in patrol uh, there are only two that I can see two vehicles at any one time on patrol, but what the sheriff's department does is, is yeoman's work, and um, I'm, I think quite excellently, I, I want to commend them, but I think it's prudent to sit down with Sheriff Wilson and find out how we can ameliorate this situation and perhaps uh, lessen some of these unanticipated costs. Supervisor Hemmingson. Uh, yeah, I just want to thank staff for the hard work that they put in, all the department heads, uh, as well as the elected officials um, who've uh, put their time in and, and uh, worked hard to get us to the point that we're at. Uh, um, we are, um, we, we did away with the furloughs. Uh, um, I mean, we're working very hard for the employees. Um, it's, uh, it's a long battle, and, uh, and I think uh, staff has done a great job working out those problems so okay well I want to thank staff also um, you know thanks to Jay and Neil and Joey and Clint you guys have done a good job uh, a lot of work has gone into that um, as well as the department heads I know it's a tricky situation balancing a budget that sometimes always seems to be dwindling um, but I will kind of highlight um, what's been made is this is the first year we're not asking for concessions um, I know that doesn't feel very good, doesn't really feel like you have something, but we're not taking anything back to, to balance the budget at this point. We've been able to do it at this point. Um, I know, and I speak for the other supervisors on it, as we go by, we obviously want to, to address the employee's situation with wages. It is not um, something um, that we take lightly. Um, we, unfortunately, we have to balance this budget. It's actually required uh, constitutionally. So. We don't have the federal uh, federal government's ability to borrow and borrow and borrow. So print, uh, print. and print. <laughs> um, so the the situation, unfortunately, right now, um, I know going forward is is we are going to find ways to try and do that. But we still have to uh, provide pro public safety and and provide all those other services that were mentioned earlier. Um, but I I do want to commend staff at this point for balancing that budget without asking for concessions and I appreciate the employees over the last few years doing that um, I know in some cases that meant 
whether a person had a job or not. And um, by, by going with the furloughs the last few years, we've been able to retain jobs that otherwise would have not been there. So we appreciate your sacrifices on that. And just so you're aware, it is, the board does have a priority to, to look after the employees on this. And I, I know it would be nice to, to get everyone up in wages, but it, it, we've got to do it with something. And uh, our budget seems to, to shrink. This is one of the few years that it hasn't shrunk. So, um, Jack. Just to add a couple of things as we go through this process, it, it is a balancing act, as I mentioned, and the Board of Supervisors is, is put in the place of making the final decision on those services. Uh, and obviously you've set the goals and objectives for the services. So as we go through this, um, and, I, and the, uh, the department heads understand this as we get into these meetings, that there are, you know, there are always a cap to whatever funds are available. And the board is not always in a position to put the bulk of the funds with the services they want to put in there because they are mandated to go to a, another service. Um, there are discretionary funds and then there are non-discretionary funds and the bulk of the funds out there are non-discretionary. As we go through this, um, you know, there are, there are some of the positives, which, you know, no concessions is definitely a positive. Um, there is a plan that we have to progressively go through these budgets and we started this during a very significant recession to get to a point where we stabilize these, uh, uh, these spikes and or drops in the uh, funding so that we can provide the services and maybe even expand some of the services where they're needed because there are some that are, you know, that are very limited. And uh, you know the department heads will tell you that as we go through this, we discuss this. But it is a balancing act. In the case of this budget, we did backfill or propose to backfill a significant part of the sheriff jail coroner budget uh, in order to avoid the layoff of a number of positions. Um, at the same time, you know, there, you know, again, other general fund departments are going to see very little expansion because of those. So that's the balancing act. We try to provide as many of the services as we can at, a, at a, an acceptable level. That's always subjective to the public, but that's the goal. And our continued financial goal is to get stabilized and then provide for the other needs that have been discussed today. Yeah. So at some point we won't. We always won't be the no, no, no group. So it, at some point as we go forward. So right. And, and I would like to mention there was a discussion about public defenders offices. We have five public defenders. They're under contract. Uh, the county is obligated to pay those public defenders just like they're obligated to run a district attorney's office. And um, the courts determine when those cases go and who they go to within that contract. Occasionally one will go outside of our contract to a different attorney. That's the judge's decision. That isn't the Board of Supervisors or my decision or even the PD's decision because they may not want the cases, but that's how it does work. And uh, the courts are in charge of how those cases are allocated. Okay. Okay. Um, at this point, we're the, the hearing's been open, so we will uh, continue the hearing to, to the next board meeting on the 24th where we will vote on the final budget. Um, and I appreciate uh, department heads and employee uh, contribution on this and, and thanks to the, to the budget team too. Okay, so at this point we are going to, that item has been continued to the next. We have uh, an 11 o'clock administrative, you know, actually we had an urgency item I'd like to address and, and uh, regarding, um, it was a request uh, from Dr. Sankis um, is they are appealing to the Building Healthy Communities group to uh, basically provide for fourth grade uh, students swimming lessons in Del Norte County. Um, it's about, their, their goal is about 300 fourth grade students um, and I know they've approached the city about this also so you can, uh, board members have a, a letter in there. Um, it's, it's not to ask the board for money but to request uh, Building Healthy Communities fund it. So what he's asking for is that the board support the concept um, and provide a letter of support. So any questions, comments? I move that we uh, produce a letter of support for the uh, proposal to get 300 fourth graders swimming, which when I was a kid, every kid in the county went to, to Gurney's in Gasky and we learned how to swim. And I think that uh, 
it just makes a much safer community when children are are competent around water. I, I would concur with you. Do we have a second? Second. It's been moved and second. Um, yeah, you have with this many water bodies in Delaware County, we have to yeah. know how to swim. So that's uh, I appreciate the the the, the project and uh, I just wasn't clear on whether we were asking to support with funds or, or just a letter of support. Just a letter of support. Okay. Yeah, I'd, good idea. Um, I, yeah. 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 Good. So um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Oh, I'm sorry. Any public comment on that item? Okay. So uh, the board's in unanimous support of that. Okay. So now we are going to do our timed item, um, which was at 11 o'clock. And uh, I can see the excitement is building in the room already <laughs> for Jay's administration report. Um, as, uh, as all of you can remember back to January, one of the, uh, the criteria we wanted to use for presentations to the board was uh, we wanted departments, uh, county departments to present to the board what they do and, and, and the, the structure. All of us IT left. Yeah. All the structure and, and uh, also, you know, as well as community partners um, that are working with the county to provide services. Um, so this is one and, and take it away, Jay. Well, as requested and directed by the Board of Supervisors through the chair, um, this will be our one and only report. We could split this up amongst a number of divisions if you'd like, but I'm sure you want me to get this over with. Um, as stated at the top of this, uh, the most important duty under Delnor County Code is to ensure full, complete, and open access to the Board of Supervisors. That's the primary duty of county administration and the county administrative office. And uh, as I interpret that, that is to allow the public to have open discourse with the Board of Supervisors, either through meetings or through the, the forum of public uh, meetings. Uh, in addition to that, the department uh, coordinates the budget, um, directs and administers the personnel management and risk management divisions. We negotiate and develop agreements, franchise agreements, uh, other types of professional service agreements. Uh, we research and prepare various documents, uh, review legislation, bring uh, legislation before the board for action with recommendations. We prepare policy documents at the direction of the board. Um, we are also the director, manager, and staff of the Office of Emergency Services. Obviously, there's a lot of other players in that, and I'll get into the individual OES uh, division in a little bit because we all know Cindy Henderson is the brains of the operation there, and I get the title. Um, we're the, I'm the public information officer for the county for official county statements and press releases. Typically, those will happen during emergencies or other significant events. And then, of course, the always other duties is assigned and necessary, which are under almost every job description in the county because we do need to be flexible. Um, as mentioned, the Personnel Risk Management Division is under administration. Uh, that number that's in that uh, slide is now incorrect. Um, there are approximately 400 full-time employees at any given time. Um, we have a single personnel risk manager uh, that oversees the division. We also have a new personnel technician, a very talented lady who came to us through a, a lot of experience uh, with another governmental agency, and we have office technicians. And uh, they process and coordinate all of our position recruitments, application screening interviews, they hire, um, or they assist in the hiring, obviously the departments hire. Uh, they do all of the notification for evaluation schedules, so that's at least 400 plus that go out every year. Um, all employee related issues, whether they be grievances, whether they be health issues, etc., will go through that department. Um, as I mentioned, uh, they have risk management, which deals with workers' compensation. There's also our health plan administration, which is a combination of administration and personnel risk management. And uh, all payroll activities actually go through personnel and onto the auditor's office. Office of Emergency Services, we've had some updates on this. I think everybody's pretty familiar with the uh, advances that that division has been made um, significantly by Cindy Henderson. She coordinates, she manages, uh, she sends out a lot of emails, and she makes sure people are motivated and 
has uh, been the lead to make Del Mar County one of the most uh, um, emergency ready counties in California, if not on the West Coast or maybe even nationwide. Um, obviously, uh, as the OES director, I have a uh, management uh, responsibility when we get to the emergency services end. Most of our employees have active roles in the emergency operations center. All county employees are disaster service workers. So we will cross over and do many different things. And uh, Cindy is, like, like I said, she is the uh, brains of the operation and the leader. And uh, she has done a considerable amount of work. Uh, they initiated the Neighbors Helping Neighbors program in Gasky and in Klamath. They'll be going out to Smith River here soon. It's been very successful. They launched a new website of preparedelnort.com. Um, during uh, this whole process, they also have expanded the Community Organizations Active in Disasters program or CERT uh, program, which they have opened up a new class just recently. Um, those people will be instrumental in any future disasters that we have, and we will have disasters. Um, OES is working and outreaching now to businesses, and you'll see those MOUs coming up um, very often on these agendas, which will allow us to reach out to the private industry for assistance during any type of significant disasters. Recreation has been a long-term and long-standing <coughs> division under administration. Uh, it was a self-sustaining department many years ago. It was put under administration several years ago. Um, this one's kind of near and dear to my heart because my first job with Delmar County when I was a teenager was under recreation. Uh, we have one recreation coordinator, that's John Horner. Uh, you hear him on the radio a lot, either through uh, promoting the Delmar Warriors or through um, the promotion for our activities. Um, he coordinates all athletic activities. We don't do many after school activities anymore, but most of these will be athletic activities so we don't compete with the school district or others that uh, are offering after school. Uh, we have teen and adult basketball, adult men's basketball, co-ed softball, adult softball, and uh, the youth basketball program, which I think everybody's really aware of. That's uh, John's programs touch about 2,000 people a year. It's relatively significant, and this is one of those services that the county provides. It is a discretionary service, but in my eyes, I don't see it as discretionary. Recreation has a significant effect on anybody who participates, and certainly sets, uh, I, I, I believe, sets the basis for all kids that get involved in being able to socialize and deal with other children as well as adults. Um, we also pull in participants out of Southern Oregon to come in and play in our leagues. Uh, over the years, we've reinstituted some of the tournaments on the weekends, which fill our campgrounds and our hotels whenever they're, uh, they're uh, offered. The Board of Supervisors has significantly invested uh, some State Parks grant money into almost every one of our facilities, but in particular Pike Field, which has uh, been known as a great place to go play softball, as well as provide the uh, uh, the fields for our Little League programs, which are not Del Norte counties, they're a nonprofit, but we provide those fields. Grants and housing, we have a fiscal manager, who's Jim Carnegie. He does all of our CDBG, the Community Development Block Grant. Um, the, there's been $5 million invested at the harbor in order to allow that project to go forward that the Board of Supervisors allocated several years ago. Um, a lot of different uh, projects have been initiated through administration. Uh, I've worked on those personally along with Jim and along with Barbara Drew. The highlights have been two boat launches in Klamath, uh, the Battery Point Lighthouse project uh, and renovation, the fish counting project, uh, and of course the ongoing, it's been almost 10 years, the Coastal Trail first phase, which is just now finishing up and uh, perhaps there will be a second phase coming if there's funding available. We also have low-income housing, and that addresses uh, a lot of issues with not only low-income but elderly and veterans, and improves our housing stock. Um, the funding for that program has diminished significantly through the recession, 
and we hope to uh, expand upon that over time. Jay, you didn't touch on it, but it is in the slides about uh, the park renovations, because uh, those have been actually really nice projects that if people have been out to Ruby, uh, Ruby Park as well as to Florence Keller, they can see, as well as the uh, playground equipment up at uh, the Birch Track. Yeah, we've hit virtually every district in regards to improvements with parks, and this board has been uh, very supportive of parks because of uh, the nature of our business around here, which is a lot of tourism, as well as the fact that we have some, uh, some parks that I think a lot of people would love to have in other areas, whether it be Camp Park, which is our, the first true park on the coast in California. It's extremely busy during the summer. Florence Keller is usually packed because it has the redwoods. Uh, Ruby Van Dievener has the Smith River. You can't really compete with those in a lot of areas. And then, of course, the Birch Track, which the board committed to a couple of years back and did some improvements to uh, the playground out there for that entire community. Now you just got to work on Hayuchi Park. Noted. Yeah, those boat launches were very significant. And right now, I think uh, I've been getting a lot of feedback, uh, especially about... Uh, the Roy Rook, which is the in, in the Klamath Glen, and uh, we did have a partner originally putting in the boat docks. The road department's going to have to pick that up because the nonprofit just didn't make it through the recession. But it is a it's a key for our sport fishermen, our tribal fishermen, as well as the town site, which is very significant during the tribal fishery seasons. Uh, purchasing, uh, the county administrator and assistant county administrator act as a purchasing agent. We deal with all purchase orders below $9999, $9,990. We review those uh, for consistency. Those then go on to the auditor's office. Um, all surplus equipment goes through administration, and all surplus property sales would go through administration. We essentially get involved in, in uh, many of the purchases that deal with uh, services. Items are purchased after the board gives authorization and spending authority to the department. Those are dealt with strictly by the department head into the auditor's office. But for uh, services, they go through our office. Clerical support, um, we have uh, a limited number of clerical support. Uh, the two office technicians are tasked with assisting day to day with uh, all divisions of administration as well as building maintenance parks and uh, the information technology department and uh, that includes uh, our clerk of the board. Uh, the office technicians coordinate all of the scheduling for county owned parks, gyms and field rentals. Uh, they notify program participants. Uh, we go over and above typically with our participants to make sure that we don't have any issues with people showing up on time so the programs run as uh, cleanly as possible and of course they deal with the public and assist the public as needed. Clerk of the Board of Supervisors. Um, the clerk is the executive secretary to the Board of Supervisors and reports to the county administrator. Uh, Tony's primary duties of the clerk are to coordinate, prepare, and disseminate the agendas of the board and attend meetings and prepare action summaries and minutes. Um, she also provides support to the board and to the uh, CAO as well as assistant CAO and anybody else. Um, the clerk also fills in for other support set staff and, and with Tony coming on board she's also picked up other duties um, because she's asked for those duties and uh, has uh, expanded upon that position. She does a wonderful job. Good job Tony. Uh, budgets, we went over the budget today. It is an obligation of the county administrative officer as the budget officer to provide a, a final adopt, adopted uh, balanced budget this takes a considerable amount of time and gets, it seems to be more time every year. Um, it's very much controlled through the state controller's office on how we do it, what we do. The Board of Supervisors has the final say on about, oh, I'd say 10% of the overall county budget is discretionary funds, uh, true discretionary. We have another 10% that is discretionary, but also mandated. So it, it just gets whittled down and the decisions the board has to make I believe are the toughest decisions because those are discretionary services. Um, each county department head is responsible for their individual budget. They pre present a requested budget that then turns into the recommended budget that then turns into the adopted budget. 
Uh, we do meet considerably and often when there are issues. We don't always see eye to eye, but in, in the bottom line is we will come up with a final budget. Um, in cooperation with the county auditor, and the county auditor plays a significant role in the county budget in Del Mar County, not just providing the numbers, but uh, Clinton takes on a role that's probably much different than a lot of the other counties in that he is on the budget team and sits down with us in virtually every meeting. So he provides other insight uh, as being a previous uh, employee in the inside the county system that, that helps us. Um, the annual budget process typically begins around January and ends no later than October 2nd and takes up a lot of time. Capital projects, capital projects are those that exceed $20,000. Uh, most of those projects have been reduced because of the recession and the amount of discretionary money. Um, we have been able to put a little bit in the budget for this year to deal with the uh, removal of 705th Street. Uh, uh, the old CDD building, as well as uh, anticipate some issues that might come up through the Betz Hall. Barbara Drew is uh, one of our staff people. She is the primary that deals with uh, capital projects in the sense that I rely on her to prepare the draft RFPs. Um, I assist her with the scope of services, and then she takes it from there, preparing the documents and then dealing with all of meeting all of the deadlines for getting those documents out as well as obtaining proposals. And then ultimately we will review the, uh, the proposals and then turn it into a contract, which she takes our county contract and prepares that into a final. Um, she's done an excellent job on this and uh, does a considerable amount of work. Uh, Tony can also now help on those because her background deals with a lot of those types of projects. So. We, we can have some coverage also. Um, legislation, I think the board is very clear on what we do as far as legislation. Our role is to deal with the advocates and also bring uh, legislation before the Board of Supervisors when need be. Um, obviously with Supervisor Finnegan's involvement in CSAC, he has a lot of insight into the legislation sometimes before our advocates ever see it, which has been a significant advantage. And then obviously, the other board members bring it forward at any given time and uh, we'll act on it accordingly. Uh, administration is called upon to basically assist, lead, administer, and solve issues. Um, we get pulled into a lot of number of departments. Uh, sometimes it's considered the old jack of all trades and a master of none on some of these, but um, what we try to do is to mediate the issues, deal with the public, educate the public, educate the board, and deal with the issues proactively, but also in a respectful manner so that we get, get a solution. Um, we certainly have followed the board's direction in regards to collaboration with other agencies and staff, and, and uh, I see it on a daily basis where staff in the county works with staff from other agencies, and they work out problems that never come to the level of administration, and that's, that's a, a an encouraging situation because we're a small community and that just needs to be done. And as mentioned, our goal is to solve the problems as needed and uh, whether they be in our division, our divisions, our department, or other departments, uh, we will get involved. Typically, any of these issues have a financial ramification, a personnel ramification, and so we're gonna be involved in it. And uh, as I mentioned in here, um, the administration staff is dedicated, experienced, and talented with a goal of providing the best services possible to the public and other agency departments while always maintaining public trust and protecting public funds. Um, it's a great group to work with. Uh, I can't say that it's ever worked as smoothly. Uh, we have a lot of experience in these people. It is, you know, it's thin in that department or division or the divisions because of that, but um, We've reduced staffing over the years in order to assist some of the other departments in the general fund overall. And part of that is because of the experience and uh, the dedication of the people that are in administration. So with that, if you have any questions. Any questions from board members? Thank Comments? You up the good work? We tell you on a daily basis you're doing a good job, so that's all you get. That's yeah. all I need. <laughs> no, good work. Yeah, what's with the fuzzy photo on the end here? 
Well, you know, <laughs> these, these faces have been disguised. I, I will say that the innocence. There was that w they were very reluctant to get in a photo, and I don't know if it was because I was in the photo too or otherwise. But I'm just going to answer that question. Yeah, I did get so, them all in the photo. Yeah, it is fuzzy. I'll give you a, a, an eight by ten color gloss. <laughs> good, <laughs> good. Um, uh, and, and I will spell? tell you that I did the PowerPoint on this one. So, and how do you spell? Hey, hey. How do you spell Pike? Misspelled. <laughs> I always thought it was P Y K E. Yeah, it is. He's thinking of Pike's Peak. Um, <laughs> one letter out of the whole. <laughs> okay, Tony did the PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> no, we we appreciate the work. I, we generally as a board probably have the most interaction with admin, and uh, you guys do a lot of good work. Uh, we appreciate you having there, and a lot of the day-to-day -day operations of the government are are facilitated by you all so we we want to thank you on that for sure so and I, I would be remiss to say that you know it, it takes a lot of uh, assistance from all of the different departments when we go through these processes as I mentioned a lot earlier on the financial end we don't always agree but ultimately the uh, I think the ultimate goal of serving the public is there and uh, it's uh, always encouraging when we see some of the positives come out of this. Uh, we deal with a lot of the negatives, and so we have to keep a little different perspective. But ultimately, the goal is there, and I think we uh, we get to that goal. Well, well I can't yeah. understate what a great team you got up there. It makes it all work with you. Yeah, a very cohesive group, and it you know you guys deal with a lot of stuff before it even gets to us. So we we appreciate your work. So. All right. Uh, at this point, I am going to. We're going to go on to the next item. Thanks for the uh, the PowerPoint. I know that was Scoot, painful for you can, to get. Can there, I yeah. just say one thing? Since yeah. staff is getting ready to leave, and I need to talk to them. Um, it must be you. <laughs> I'd like to request that we look into the possibility of a stop sign at Lake Earl and Moorhead. A lot of. Okay. Um, so maybe you can bring something back at <coughs> next meeting. Stop. Great. Four yeah, four-way stop. Cool. All right, that is a good idea. Okay, so we're going to go on to item 21, consider which is under legislative and budget issues, consider miscellaneous legislative and budget matters pertinent to the County of Del Norte, authorize the chair to sign and send appropriate letters with respect to matters pending before the state or federal governments. Jay. Uh, a lot has been mentioned about the debt and amendment process in the, the next three days. Uh, there is a considerable un number of bills that are being cons uh, considered right now. Uh, we don't have any before the board today for a, an actual uh, support. Uh, we are looking at what the ramifications will be of the next three days. These are scary days uh, because you just don't know what's going to come out of these gut and amends. Uh, but there are a number of bills out there. Uh, we've brought forward all of the bills I believe that we need to have a letter or have been asked to have a letter uh, prepared by the Board of Supervisors. Um, we'll keep you apprised as to what happens in the next three days. Okay. You talk about that. It's more like sausage making is what we say, you know, you just, but uh, in the next couple of days, talk about the gut and amend. We already talked about 594. Um, that was Steinberg's bill that he allowed to be done, the gut and amended. Uh, Amiano has got a couple going forward. One he got um, amended yesterday that he was very upset. In fact, he even personally lashed out at the CSAC um, representative, Kiana Buss, who brought the opposition, led the opposition. And it was that he wanted um, suicide prevention barriers on every single bridge, period. That's cr that is crazy. There are more county bridges no that would have bankrupted counties. And when it got finally amended to the fact that it was either new bridges or bridges that had a documented history of suicide for prevention, and most of that's already in code anyway. So, but he, this morning he came up with a new one uh, that again was uh, a Steinberg gut and amend in conjunction with Leno, Senator Leno, but uh, some Amiano is introducing a bill regarding marijuana, which we knew was probably going to poke its ugly head. AB 604 regarding medical marijuana that would establish a state commission and would usurp all the local land use authority from the counties and that we would have no jurisdiction over the siting uh, of medical marijuana, um, whatever you call them, dispensaries. 
um, nor would any of our local ordinances, city or county, be able to be recognized regarding land use of these that uh, the state, again, is trying to take that. So Amiano seems to be the new guy that loves this gut and amend, and I just um, I hope we survive because God knows what he's going to come up with next. Well, isn't Amiano the one that, that authored the legislation about the transgender? Yeah, he's he a San Francisco uh, yes. very ultra-liberal. Incredible. Uh, yeah. We've been that's just lawsuits waiting to pop up on that one. I Mr. Just, Amiano and Mr. Leno's bills have been some of the uh, most dangerous to local government when it comes to additional yeah. costs. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, yeah. And, and these are individuals that have history with local government through San Francisco, but it's a little, of course it's a little bit different down there, but yeah. you know, still, it's disturbing. So it's, CSAC will continue. They're, we're leading the opposition on that marijuana one that I just got an email on. And, and I'm sure there will be others. So for now, I think we just defer to, to CSAC because the principles and policies are, you know, for at least for this last year, have been exactly what we wanted. So we'll just okay. hope it works. All right. Thanks for your work on that. Um, okay. At this point, we are going to adjourn the meeting to the 24th is our next. Oh, we, uh, yeah, we, we're going to adjourn into closed session, but otherwise, the, yeah.